All right, this is going to be a recap of the first three PWG shows of uh, 2015. So let's start off with From Out of Nowhere. Uh, this is an excellent show from top to bottom. I thought everybody pretty much uh, was allowed to deliver. Everyone had, pretty much had the green light, even on the undercard. However, though, I could see some people... You know, PWG has taken some criticism in the past about there being way too much back and forth action uh, throughout the whole cards. Um, so with this show right here, things didn't really switch up until you got to the Drew Gulak and Chris Hero match. That match is more technically oriented, you know, more submissions, more strikes. Um, it was definitely a different style of a match than a lot of the matches on the undercard. So, you know, from out of nowhere, this show right here, it features three great matches. The last three matches were all great. Um, so th this is definitely a must-see show, and I would definitely probably say from top to bottom, the best out of the three shows. Uh, Ricochet and Matt Seidel. Um, you know, we get two of the best high flyers in, in, on the indies right here, just going out there. And um, it was just poetry emotion. This is one of those matches you could just watch over and over again. Just came off really, really good. I, I didn't know this, but Matt Seidel had a pretty nasty foot injury, which probably cut his uh, tenure sure, short in the WWE. But uh, in PWG, he's really being, uh, you know, showcased quite smoothly he's he's allowed to deliver in pwg and ring of honor so far it just seems like they're treating him like he's a uh, just another guy on the undercard so we'll see what happens there but you know him and ricochet man those those two guys they tore it up there that that was great stuff next up we have the monster mafia uh taking on the young bucks so my first uh chance in looking at the uh, monster mafia and it's really tough to say from this show right here, the the potential that they can reach, I I, I just don't know yet. Because this, this match right here, it was great and everything, but it was more of the Young Bucks just going out there and putting on a wrestling clinic. Um, I did like the aggression from the Monster Mafia. I like I like the, the fact that they took this match serious, even though the Young Bucks really weren't. Uh, that was... That was really cool to see. But like I said, th this is just Young Bucks going out there and just, you know, rocking the house. This is more about them just, you know, tearing it down. It was more of a showcase for the Young Bucks than for the Monster Mafia. But uh, it still came off pretty great, though, I would say. Um, you know, the Young Bucks just do it again. And then the main event was definitely the match of the night. Roderick Strong versus uh, Trevor Lee. There's been some uh, criticism about Trevor Lee maybe getting too much too soon with the uh, very controversial uh, win over Michael Elgin at BOLA. Um, but you know, this guy right here, I, I, you know, he, he, he's coming to play, man. He, um, I thought him and Roderick put on an excellent match. This is a breath of fresh air, you know, I, and I'm, I'm really happy for Roderick Strong now that he's the PWG champion. He, you know, you, you never really seen Roderick in positions like this where he could just go out there in the main event with a younger guy and kind of, you know, control the match, dictate the pace as the champion. You know, I'm so used to seeing Roderick Strong, you know, going for the championship and coming up short. So it's just a great thing to see. And this match is amazing. I would say that the last five minutes, you know, they, they really rock the house. You know, Roderick, as we know, he's going on a tear this year. But, uh, you know, Trevor Lee came to play as well, man. The Just great action between those two guys. Just an excellent, excellent world title match. I've, I've definitely said this is definitely one of the, uh, the one of the better PWG main event title matches that I've seen in a really long time. So uh, great stuff from him. And even though Trevor Lee lost the match. It was a star-making performance uh, for uh, Trevor Lee, without a doubt. So we move on to uh, Don't Sweat the Technique. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Don't Sweat the Technique. It was a classic uh, rap song from back in the day from uh, Eric B. and Rakim from 1992. That's probably one of my favorite songs ever, so I had to bring that up. But yeah, Don't Sweat the Technique here. Um, yeah, this this was another. I thought this was another great show. To be honest with you, um, really, the two matches that really stole the show were Tommy End and Chris Hero, and then you had uh, Roderick Strong and Zack Saber Jr., which was incredible. Let me just talk about Roderick Strong and Zack Saber Jr. first. This match was awesome. This is. Um, oh, man, it's it's definitely one of the best PWG matches of all time. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's really close to Danielson Hero from 2009 as, you know, probably the best or one of the best PWG title matches. And, um, you know, this is what we want to see. You know, Zack Sabre Jr. is an awesome talent. It was just so refreshing to see a guy like that on the show. He just definitely has such a unique style. You know, I think Excalibur and the guys in charge of PWG, you know, this is what's going to sell DVDs or sell shows. You know, we want to see, you know, dream matches uh, featuring guys we just don't get to see a lot of. And, uh, you know, him and Roderick Strong, you know, that just tore it up here. There, this
this match had great psychology too. Uh, you know, even Hero on commentary was like encouraging Zack Sabre Jr. to go back to the arm, go back to the arm, and didn't really know if he was, but when he did, it was like boom. You know, it was like bang. You know, he he, he really um really made Roderick suffer when he kicked him in the arm. And we just had some amazing reversals with Zack Sabre Jr. countering the stronghold and some of the best near falls and penny predicaments I've ever seen, man. And uh, the match definitely delivered. They, they talked about the jet lag that Zack Sabre Jr. might have had, you know, taking the flight from from uh, from England or the UK all the way over to Los Angeles. It just um, so you got to give him credit for putting on a performance this good. And Roderick Strong just adds another gem to his uh, 2015 collection of incredible Roderick Strong matches. So so there we go with that. So the other match that really delivered was uh, Chris Hero and Tommy End. I believe these two guys have probably had shitloads of matches together. You know, Hero is known for uh, wrestling a lot overseas, particularly in WXW in Germany. Uh, we've seen Tommy End in a lot of tournaments in Germany featuring Brian Danielson. So these two guys know each other and definitely very, very stiff action. Very, very... Um, you know, just, just just a roller coaster ride of a match here. Definitely the best uh, singles performance I've seen Chris Hero have since the weight gain. So just just definitely great stuff there. That was uh, that definitely hit the four star level. Uh, so some other matches um, to talk about from this show. Th this show is excellent, man. Th this is this is another great show. Um, really, the other match that got people talking was uh, Speedball Mike Bailey taking on Trevor Lee. This featured a must see spot. There's um, I don't know what they were going for, but it it, it, it looked it looked crazy. The uh, the suplex on the uh, on the apron uh, looked like something really really uh, crazy was going to happen there. But uh, thank God everyone was healthy and all right. Uh, but Speedball Mike Bailey, man, he he has an interesting look. He looks really really young. He actually comes out with like a karate suit. Uh, he's kind of out of shape though. He doesn't have a great physique, but uh, the kind of kicks that this guy does and his martial arts background—it's he's just got a really unique look and a unique style. And uh, you know, him and Trevor Lee had a good match right there. Uh, the uh, the Andrew Everett and, and Ricochet match—you know—you got two two of the best high flyers in the game right there. Uh, Andrew Everett has a uh, replaced ACL, not a not a uh, repaired ACL. So for him to be able to you know stay hold for hold with Ricochet with you know all that high flying that he could do it's, it's pretty amazing but he's a great high flyer they, they had a really entertaining match as well and um you know love gun chris saban and matt seidel took on the monster mafia which was another good show from the monster mafia uh saban and seidel as a tag team it's unfortunate that saban got hurt leading into ddt4 but yeah don't sweat the technique featuring one of the best main events in pwg history and just uh, another really really solid undercard and then things kind of drop off with uh, ddt4 you know, the last couple of DDT4s from PWG have um, been, been pretty underwhelming, 2013, 2014. I just think they felt very, very rushed, and they just haven't felt like huge shows like they have in 2009, 2010. And, of course, 2011, when you had the ultra-stacked uh, DDT4 featuring, you know, so many amazing tag teams. But, you know, here at DDT4 2015, we're kind of in a rebuilding stage right here. You know, we're seeing a lot of tag teams that... You know, we haven't seen before. A lot of a lot of these guys are very, um, you know, they're finally getting a chance to show what they can do on the PWG stage. Overall, I thought it came out pretty good, but at the same time, it's really, really tough. You know, it's just tough. Um, you know, the, 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 there's, the expectations are just so high for PWG, particularly with the DDT4 tournament. You know, I can't say this is one of the best DDT4s of all time. I would probably put it on the lower half, but still, it was a good effort from a lot of these teams. Um, some of the matches were underwhelming, but you know, it, it was really, it was really, really cool to see the finals. The finals really came off great, I would say, or really, really good. Um, so let's go through this thing. We have the Beaver Boys who ended up making it to the finals. They took on Team Tremendous in the opener, and Team Tremendous was kind of out of shape. You know, they were, uh, you know, suits. Um, I don't know. It seemed like Excalibur was kind of bashing this on commentary at the beginning, but it ended up being a solid match. Uh, Biff Busick and Drew Gulak actually lost to the inner city machine guns of uh, Ricochet and Rich Swan. I was disappointed. I thought Biff and uh, Biff Busick and Drew Gulak were probably probably the best team on paper for this tournament. And uh, you know, I you know, I guess the mentality is they don't really fit that PWG style because they're so they're so grounded. They don't really do a lot of high flying maneuvers. So maybe that's why they got eliminated so soon. But I would have had them at least get to the semifinals or even the finals. Um, so next we have Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee taking on Mike Bailey and uh, Matt Seidel. 
You know, um, so, so Chris Saban was actually injured, so Mike Bailey actually had to replace him. So, you know, I thought Saban and Seidel, that would have been a money finals had they made it to the finals. But, you know, Andrew Everett and uh, Trevor Lee advanced in, in that match, which was a very, very solid match. And then we had the world's cutest tag team taking on the Monster Mafia. There was some uh, sexual things pointed towards Candice LeRae, very, very controversial things. And then Roderick Strong came out and totally annihilated the world's cutest tag team to enable the Monster Mafia to win the tag team titles and advance to the semifinals. Uh, so there we go with that. So we have the semifinals now. We have, uh, I believe it was the Beaver Boys going over the Monster Mafia. Which is a very, very lame match. This match did not come off good. Watching this match, I'm just thinking, yeah, some of these new tag teams, it's just, it's just not working here. And we had a pretty awkward finish. And uh, the Beaver Boys actually defeat Monster Mafia to win the tag team title. So we have another tag team title change. Well, that was probably the weakest match of the night. Uh, so next up, we have Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee surprisingly going over Ricochet and Rich Swan of the Inner City Machine Guns to advance to the finals. And, uh, yeah, I would say Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee, they made for a nice entertaining tag team. Um, so they, they actually meet, they, Everett and Lee would actually meet the, um, what was it? The beat was it the Beaver Boys? They would meet the Beaver Boys in the finals. But before we get to the finals, we have a attraction match. We have Johnny Gargano and TJ Perkins, which is, was a nice attraction. I was kind of disappointed that Gargano was doing a lot of wacky things in this match, but you know it didn't really get a lot of time. But you know the Gargano and Perkins got to see some nice mat wrestling right there. Uh, Gargano is actually calling himself Johnny Johnny Wrestling. Because obviously, probably because of Johnny Manziel calling himself Johnny Football. And uh, so, next up, we have the world title match. We have Roderick Strong, Brian Cage, and that young knockout kid, or that old knockout kid, or middle aged knockout kid, uh, Chris Hero, in a triple threat match. Once I saw this was a triple threat match, I was kind of disappointed. I, I just knew it wasn't going to be that good. Um, I just feel like Brian Cage is carrying too much muscle. Chris Hero is carrying too much body fat at the moment. So I don't know. I just I just thought this match would be kind of lethargic, kind of clunky. And Roderick was kind of playing a chicken shit heel at the beginning of the match, which disappointed me. See, I think Roderick needs to be a babyface in PWG, particularly when you're going up against two bigger guys. But, um, yeah, I understand why Roderick is a heel because he's so established compared to the rest of the young roster in P on PWG right now. But, uh, you know, Cage looked, you know, he busted out some nice things. Uh, you know, this match is going to be good because Roderick and Hero just have so much experience together. Uh, obviously, their experience is going to pay off, and it definitely did. This is definitely a nice, solid match. I thought the ending came off great. Roderick just sick-kicking everybody simultaneously over and over again. So uh, that was um, that was a nice, solid match. It just didn't compare to the Roderick Strong's two previous PWG title matches. And then we have the finals. We have um, the Beaver Boys taking on Andrew Everett and uh, Trevor Lee. So like I said, guys, Andrew Everly, Everett is a great high flyer, uh, but he has a replaced ACL, which is crazy. Most people just repair the ACL and, and then they're fine. But a, uh, a um, replaced ACL, that's, you know, that just shows you how devastating the injury was when he did get injured last year. So, um, the Beaver Boys are kind of being assholes. They actually got a huge, you guys are assholes chant. And uh, they were just trying to, t they, they did a kind of a shady, um, I, I believe it was a chair shot behind the referee's back to take out uh, Andrew Everett's, uh, you know, a replaced ACL. And they were going to work on the leg. And it was cool when Trevor Lee uh, saw that. He was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? And then the rest of the arena was chanting, what the fuck? So that was pretty cool. I mean, the, the match is good. You know, you don't have the star power involved, you know, to compare with the American Wolves or the Kings of Wrestling or the Young Bucks. Young Bucks missing again from DDT4. But, um, you know, they told a good story. Eventually, Trevor Lee got the hot tag. Uh, Andrew Effort busted out like a double moonsault or, or double shooting. I don't even know what it was. Uh, a double four. 50 splash I, I don't even know what that was that's crazy he's a great high flyer uh you know trevor lee he's proven people wrong man he he's got a great move set he could bust out a lot of nice things offensively that really get the crowd into it and the uh the beaver boys you know they're all right i i think uh john silver is a hell of a talent i believe he wrestles in lucha underground if i'm not mistaken so uh good showing from the beaver boys there was so much hype about the monster mafia but they didn't make it to the finals i was kind of underwhelmed with the Mon monster mafia to be honest with you but let me know if you could recommend anything from them to check out but you know they're in a, pwg's in a rebuilding stage right now with a lot of the guys from roh being under contract 
like uh, Michael Elgin, Adam Cole, and Kyle O'Reilly. You can't use those guys anymore. So, you know, bringing in Zack Sabre Jr., that was a smart move. I thought that, that main event was awesome. But, um, you know, it's going to take some time for everyone to get, you know, reacquainted and uh, reaccustomed to the, uh, you know, the PWG undercard scene. But, you know, Roger Strong is a strong champion. And I thought these were three good shows. You know, I, I thought From Out of Nowhere was great. Don't sweat the technique. Great main event and DDT four, you know, while not on the same level as those two, those two shows, it was um, it was a great showcase for the younger talent. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, take care.